hey what's up everyone it's your girl brain shanae and today is my stop for the hero voices book tour and i'll be doing a book review for the door of no return by kwame alexander and this book had me in absolute tears like just reading it and like reading it again and um taking everything in ev taking every single word in um it was very painful um, because we are following a boy who is from, um, you know, the of the Ashanti people from the upper upper Quanta, which actually before I even get ahead of myself, let me go ahead and read the author's notes. That way you get a better understanding. But anyways, before I even go to the author's note, this is the map and this is where we're going to be at well um well this is where I was as I was reading this book and if you have this book or if you are going to get this book keep in mind this is where the journey will take will, will take you will take you from upper quanta to Kumasi to lower quanta to the Cape Coast and to the Cape Coast castle and Accra and this is considered the Ashanti kingdom right here and so for the note from the author it states this is historical fiction it is a novel inspired by history based on the real lives of the Ashanti people who are native to a region of West Africa known now known as Ghana. It was a hard story to write, but it was one that needed to be told. I wrote it for the me nobody knows, for the you who is still becoming, for the possibility that is in us. The great poet, philosopher, and abolitionist Ralph Waldo Emerson said, be an opener of doors. I've tried to be that here. Now you must walk through with your eyes unshut, with your heart unlocked and your mind as free as the mighty sea, Aquaba. And of course, reading this author note and then finally reading, like reading this book, my heart was just broken because it talks about the story of a young boy who grew up you know, in Upper Quanta, um, who loved to swim in the river and stuff like that, looked up to his big brother Kwasi, um, loved his mother, his papa. Um, he even mentioned about um, his school teacher, um, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Goodluck Phillip, who talks to him about uh, Queen Victoria and her reign and stuff like that. Um, and he ends up questioning that because he says, why are we, why are we learning this? Why do we have to learn a language that is not of our own? Because um, it even says here, um, it says, Akwaki Ansa was sent many, many seasons ago to Accra to attend the Queen's Missionary School at Asu for the propagation of better education and improved language. And when he returned, he had improved his name to Good Luck Kwaki Philip and, and into are insisted to the council of elders that we need to be propagated as well so he is the teacher there in upper quanta in the kingdom but even but even kofi the main character in this book talks about and questions um the teaching methods from mr good luck philip about how come we're learning about their history well how come we don't learn about our kingdom our our kingdom's history and how come it is not being taught we're taught some another person another someone that we don't know about really someone else's history and he tells tells Kofi that he needs to know all the things that are unknown because it can be very knowledgeable and it can actually he can make actually do something with this knowledge um you know and he's thinking like I don't need this knowledge you know I'm gonna be upper quanta for the rest of my life yada 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 I'm eventually gonna have my initiation of from being a boy into becoming a man um so there was a lot happening um and but then to top it off we deal with his bigger his older brother Kwasi and so the big thing is with this book you have the upper upper quanta and lower quanta and they were at war amongst one another but then they had we had um they had written a treaty and stuff to settle that but um during a part of during a certain time of the year they have a king's festival and Kofi's older brother was part of the king's um like uh fighting festives like they were wrestling between upper quanta and lower quanta and you know Kwasi um from upper quanta Kofi's older brother he defeated lower quanta um on unfortunate circumstances 
And so that just with that, you know, with those unfortunate circumstances and was an accident that led to their demise. Um, and then it takes off where they're captured by Lower Quanta. Um, and Kofi sees things and he will remember it for the rest of his life by being captured and seeing what he had seen. Um, that, like I said, will be with him for the rest of his life. Um, and, you know, they took him for punishment because, you know, Laura Quanta felt like there was no justice being served, no nothing. So they took justice into their own hands. And hence why they captured not only Kofi, but his older brother, Kwasi. And then once that was done, the people from Lower Quanta, you know, they decided like, hmm, let's do this. Even the king of Quanta, so, you know, you know what, let's do something with these prisoners that we that we've captured, we can get something for them get from them, you know, or for them, I should say. And then it, it, it goes into so much like I, it goes into a lot. So like, for instance, it's all about gold. Like, that's the one thing. So like in as Kofi is learning things in school he's learning about other people outside of where they live but he doesn't know much about them he's just hears these different lessons from his teacher so it talks about the gold and how in the difference between upper and lower so for instance I'm going to be quoting this book because I did tab it up so it says the gold after the war between upper and lower our king took control of the gold storing it in a secret repository where whose location is only known by three people the king of upper his paramount chief and the head authority of gold digging who happens to now be my father so that's why they really captured them but then they wouldn't Kofi didn't know where the gold was. He didn't know anything about that. It was between the, amongst these three people that I just told you about. So that's when they said, okay, we'll put you into better use. And so they did that. They thought that, okay, I can get, make a profit from them. And, you know, if it works, it works because he's like, I'm not going to have them return back home. I still deserve justice. So then we go into more information about the journey that Kofi is going to be taking and and what he's going to see throughout this journey. So as the people from Lower Quanta and they approach these two people to pretty much trade off their captives. So it says the transaction. It says our king Warhorn utters request 25 muskets, 12 pistols, 10 stone gunpowder, a basket of knives, 100 iron bars, a bag of long cloth, a dozen white plums, plumes, some small, small tobacco, a small, a smike, excuse me, a smoking pipe and five bottles of rum per head. So they were trading Kofi and some other people that they have captive, they have brought to capture to white people to the castle that they took them to which they then put them in a dungeon and then of course coffee you know as he is trapped he doesn't know what's going on nothing until he meets a girl who pretty much helps him along the way because she's been at this castle for a long time but she's seen that people that that were left the castle never return and she was pretty much giving coffee the scoop of that and so she brings this down to him. It says, the wonderfuls bring misery and destruction to those who do not like them. Their eyes covet the whole earth and they see us as shadows to step on. They do not care of our celestial origins, organ, origins that we descended from the great good above. They do not respect our traditions, our her heroic past, the power of women, the wisdom of elders and spiders, the joy of peace. They ignore the life giving palm fruit for its slippery sweet profits and cannot see even a glimmer of gold for the riches it yields. They do not care about honoring the stars or the magnificent sky that houses them and and that they can use it to guide them toward plunder. The mighty river that births us to them is a speedy path to our destruction. This place is not a castle of anything good. It is a dungeon, empty of heart, and these alien people with their wolfish logic and wicked impulses will eat at our flesh until the blood of Ashanti dries and our steady beat is no more. That is their way. 
Since I came here with child eight months ago, I have counted 112 children and women taken from this damp, dark cell, never to return. And each day I kneel down and say a prayer to Bona, the great one that breathes mountains, that my first child, my beautiful little boy who was unborn days ago, right where you lay is near a, a star in the sky, reunited with all that is good. And, and of course, the woman that I'm speaking of is Afua. Afua is the one that breaks everything down to Kofi, Kofi and explains to him where he is at and they will not be returning home. Never. It's never. You will never return home. That door is closed. Another door that you'll be exiting will lead to your destruction and demise. And this this book is is beautifully written is well done it is written and verse just to let you know and I loved how Kwame wrote this it's really beautiful and to the T like he says in the author note you need to open up your heart you need to open up your mind and just take in what you are reading and I did take it in and it just it made me it made me sad I'm not trying to be emotional it made me sad but it also made me so angry because I live in the U.S. and it's I, it's crazy how in the U.S. they try to forget. No, scratch forget. They're trying to erase the history that they created. They want to forget all this that happened. They want it to be erased and like it never happened. And it did happen and it's still affecting the Black community in the U.S. And you know, during the slave trade, they went all over the place. But since I'm in the US, I can only speak from where I currently live. I can't speak for other countries. But in the US, they're really just trying to never, just never acknowledge the history that they created, the problem that they created. You know, like, like where's the reparations? There, what, there has not been none. And you know what? I can't even hold my breath because I don't even know that. I don't think that will ever happen. They don't want this, they don't want this to be taught in schools. They don't want kids to know. They feel like, like if, you know, if we bring it up, we are just bringing it up to make white kids feel bad. No, no, that is not the case. Not the case at all. It's just for people, for everyone to know the history, for them to be aware to bring awareness to the history of this country, the history of slavery. Why do people choose, why do some people choose to be so ignorant of it? I do not understand. And this book, of course, it's a five of five stars for me because I, I can never forget this. I can never forget it. And it just baffles me that people on this earth just try to brush this aside, brush it aside, like it hasn't affected millions of lives. And with this action alone, it still affects people today. And Kwame is just an extravagant, brilliant writer. And I just loved this book. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet because it is so, so freaking good. For me to be in tears, to have me crying, for me to feel the pain. Like I will never technically feel that pain, that that physical pain that my ancestors went through. But just reading the words off these pages, it's like I felt it in my soul and in my heart. And it really, it just saddens me how... They say here that they want to do better or whatever, but it seems like they're going back and we're not moving forward, you know? And so this book was just brilliant. So well done. And with Kofi, for him to realize that he probably will never see his family again, but having Afua with him, I think was really good. Um, 
because I don't know where he would have been without her. So just her giving him that guidance of where and what what he may what he has to expect, what he's going to be expected, you know, to do and where he's going to be going. She gave him a heads up. And even on the ship, like when he was talking about, you know, about my loved ones, will they remember me about the people that he saw die in front of him prior to his journey to the castle and unto the ship? You know, like, it just, this book makes you think. It makes you put things in perspective, which I love. A lot of books have not done that with me this year, and I'm glad this one did. And put everything in perspective for me even on like on this one it says to the white faces it says with their sinister plans and long guns holding crooked power and our destiny in their thieving white hands we are not human but we are you must remember that afua whispers touching my forehead and the left side of my chest no matter our fate and i'm like i'm so happy that kofi was able to have her to to guide him I think that was one thing that gave me some hope for Kofi because without her, I don't know where he would end up being. I don't know what his mindset would be. I, I just honestly do not know. And then, it, of course, it says a door of no return, which this is the title. It's talking about the door where it leads him to the ship, the boat that he's going on. And to a land that he doesn't know. That doesn't know and not one soul doesn't know anything doesn't know doesn't not know. And that was a door that he left and the door of no return. <sighs> but this, this book, like I said, it is, I highly recommend it. If you haven't picked up this book yet, I suggest you do so because it speaks volumes. It speaks of so many volumes to, to problems that we are still occurring today in 2022. And this, with this story, let me bring it back with this story. It starts, let me go, in 1860. This is Ashanti Kingdom, September in 1860. And we're in 2022. And still, we want rights. We want our rights. We want justice. But yet, they don't want to give it to us. <sighs> but, but I love this book so, so much. Like, since it was written in verse, I was able to read it very quickly to the point where I would go back and um, read it again. I would read, like, I will read the passage, I'll read a couple, like, a couple pages, and then I'll go back and reread it. Um, because this book just touched me. Not a lot of books, like I said, a lot of books have not touched me like, like, like this this year. I can probably name like maybe two, two books that touched me, my soul like this. And I appreciate this. I appreciate the writing. I appreciate the storytelling of Kofi and his, his childhood, his friends, the girl that he likes, Ama, um, the dynamic in his, in the upper Kwanzaa kingdom, the relationship that he has, that he has with his brother. I loved it. I loved every single moment of this book. And like I said, if you haven't picked this book up, please do so, please, because it, it will open, like, even if it gives you a moment, it brings you back and it brings you into uh, many different perspectives of how things have still haven't changed and that we are still fighting for our rights still today in 2022. So I just want you to keep that in mind because like I said, it's spot on. And even starts at the very beginning where it says the story of Afun. It says, there was even a time many seasons ago when our people were the sole supplier of the purest, purest and most valuable gold in the world. The river was bedded with enough gold to make a century of royal stools for the Ashanti kings, a thousand shiny bracelets for their wives. Then came the foreigners, invaders disguised as friends, pretending to be students of our way with only one lesson to learn, how to steal our fortunes. But we fought them off, protected our rich, rich land, our river, the Ulfen ri River. It flows to the east into the mighty prow, which travels over 150 miles down to the coast, where it drains to a vast blue unknown that we call the Blue Sea. 
and it says, on the rolling side of Afun are deep forests and farmlands and villages and a boy of the same name you see on the morning of your birth 11 years ago, your mame squatted at the edge of the water and often carried her fifth child on its shoulders at first breath. It is true. I was there that you stopped crying as you floated off like a ship inching toward the horizon. The river often grabbed you with an invisible cord wrapped around each moment of your day, held you like a mother cradles a baby, pulled you like the moon does the earth. Ever since, you and the water have been bound, river and sun, wave and flutter. That is how you got your name, my grandson. And that starts the beginning of Kofi's life, of when he was born. And then from that point on, we're on a journey from when he's like a teenager and he has to put things in perspective and and fly and I don't want to spoil this for anyone but that is my review I gave this a five to five stars I hope really hope you do pick this book up because it really touched my soul and I think it will touch yours as well make sure you get your copy today five to five stars I really hope you read this book but that is my review I really hope you enjoyed this book review if you did please give me a thumbs up but thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.